Hi guys, welcome to another video. In Power BI sometimes you have a table that contains events, so every row represents an event. And for every event you have a start date and an end date, so a from and a to date. And what you actually need is a table that contains all dates in between the start and the end date. So in this video we're going to look at how you be able to convert that table into the, ta into the desired table that contains every single date. Uh, and we're going to look at how to do that both in Power Query as well as in Power BI. So stay tuned. So here I am in Power BI and I have this very basic uh, events table. I only have four events and every event starts at a particular date and ends at a particular date. So now what we want to do, let me go to my uh, to my canvas here and say, well, I have the uh, dates out of my uh, calendar table here in a, um, uh, in a table here on my canvas. And so for every day, I want to know how many open events do I have, how many, how many events are running on that particular day. I could also solve this by DAX and, and, and uh, just to provide a little bit of context, I'm going to give you the, the DAX that you would write in order to uh, to solve the issue using DAX. Okay, so that will be my open events or number of open events. Number of open events. So what I would do here is I would say, well, I want to count the rows of a filter table and I want to filter down the events table. Uh, and so to just events that are running. So I want to avoid uh, including events that haven't started yet. So I'm going to take the, the events from and make sure that, I, that, that it is before or equal to the selected value of the date in order to disclude uh, uh, events that haven't started yet. And do the same, same thing for uh, events too. Right, so I don't want to have any uh, events that have already ended. So this should be larger than the selected value of the dim calendar date. Okay, so let me close this down. And this is going to give me my open events. So this here particular uh, situation, I could also solve using a little bit of DAX. Um, but if you don't want to write this kind of DAX or uh, there you have a different scenario, which is probably the case, uh, for whatever reason, this doesn't solve your issue. And so you actually need to convert that table and make sure that you have a row in your table for every day in between the two dates, the start and the end date. Okay, so let's have a look at how we would fix that. So I moved over to Power Query and here I have the events table. And what we want to do is we want to go ahead and include a list of all values in between the from and the to date. So let's go ahead and do so. We're going to move over to add a new column. So we want to add a column, which is going to be a custom column. So here in the formula bar, what we're going to specify is we want to have a list of dates. Start date, well that should be our from date obviously. Uh, the count. So what we want to do is take the amount of dates in between the from and the to dates. So we need the date duration. Uh, duration days, duration days from the uh, to minus the from date, minus not the underscore, minus the from date. Okay, and um, as a third parameter, the step. So we have to specify the kind of the, the kind of duration. So that should be a day uh, duration at the day level. So we say duration, and let's say one for a day, and then zero hours, minutes, and seconds, and all zeros. Okay. Close this down. So now what we're going to have is a list of all these values in between all the dates in between the, the from and the to. So we want to expand all of them in one go. Two new rows, obviously. Okay. So this is it. Now we have it. Now let's before I do so, I, I, let, let's change the name of the column. Let's already make sure that this has the, the correct name here. So I don't have to change anything here. Then obviously here, I need to change this as well. And there we go. So we convert this into a date. A date from and to can go, we don't need it anymore. So we remove these columns, close and apply. So now the formula gets gets, gets is, isn't as, as hard anymore. The DAX is gonna be simpler, right? If I if I do it this way. So if this is sec to load. Uh, oh 
Oh, the dim calendar. Of course, we need to change the, the dim calendar a little bit now. Right, so now all we have is a um, events date. We don't have a, a from and a to anymore. So we'll go ahead and, and update that here. Close this down. So this works. So in the measures table, now if all I need to do now is simply say I'm gonna count the rows. So the uh, number of open events is simply, oh, fat fingers, is simply to count the rows of the events table. We don't have to do anything else, this is just it. So this, this makes DAX a lot easier, of course. Oh, we do need the relationship to it. It has to be set up. So from date to date. So we want to have that filter get propagated from the dim calendar to the events table. And here we go. So we get the same results, but this, of course, is easier to do here in Power. Uh, in Power, the, the, the DAX measure is, is simpler. Last, but at least we're going to look at how you would uh, produce that table here in Power BI. So I went back to the same setup I had before. So just that with those four, uh, th those four records in the events table. And now here in Power BI, we're gonna see how to uh, how to produce the table that contains all dates in between the from and the to date. So let's go ahead, include a new table in our uh, in our data set. Just call it table for now. So what we're gonna do here is say, well, we wanna use this formula called generate. So generate. But to generate, so actually what it says here, the second table expression will be, so I can cross join two tables and the second table expression will be evaluated for each row the first table. Sounds harder than it is. Let me just show you how this, how this would work. So we start off by saying, well, we, we take the values. So just every unique record in the dim calendar date column. And so let's go ahead and cross, cross join it with the events. But now we can filter down the events table and it's gonna get filtered down so we can actually use the, 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 the values in this table that we've produced here in, the, in line number three, right? All of the individual dates in our calendar table. So we can say filter the events table and filter this down to just events that are ongoing at that particular date. So we wanna avoid including events that haven't started yet. So what we're gonna say is, well, the events, the, the, so the, the from, the events from should be before or equal to the 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 the, the dim calendar date. Okay. Also, we want to make sure that, and it's the other way around. So we don't want to include any events that have not that that have already ended. So the two date the events two should be after uh, uh, or uh, equal to the dim calendar date. So let's go ahead and, and run this. And here we go. So now we get that same table. Okay, so we get the same table. So we have all of these dates. Again, we'd be able to uh, to let go of the uh, the from and the to. So in, in order to do so, we would say we'll simply select the columns out of this particular out of this table and just give me the the date, which is obviously the date. Give me the ID column, which we have available here, which would obviously be the ID. And then there's some particular value that has been included in this table. So we want to probably bring that uh, in, in this table here as well. So that's our value. There you go. So now we have the same table. And, and so we'd be able to uh, to actually include that same, uh, that same DAX. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Did you like the video? Like the video. And don't forget to, to subscribe. Thanks.